Hi, how you doing? Today we're going to cover part one of the history of English martial arts in as short a time as possible, starting as early as we can and ending when civil war breaks out. In 1181, the Assize at Arms decreed which weapons different classes of men were obliged to possess. In 1220, Elias Pugin was taken to court for the crime of stealing a horse. He claimed his occupation as fencing master and professional champion. He lost the case and also lost a foot as punishment. In 1285, weapons inspections were added to the existing laws and schools teaching the art of fence were banned in the City of London. In 1310, the fencing master Roger the Skirmisher was charged with keeping a school of arms and imprisoned. References to fencing masters and schools of fence occur more and more throughout the 14th and 15th century, during which time it was standard practice for every Englishman to possess a longbow of yew and practice for two hours a week, normally after church on a Sunday. It was not yet law. Images of wrestling from this period abound, almost all showing a form of close grip wrestling utilising either a belt or a fabric scarf, but there are no clear records detailing the system. In the first half of the 15th century, The Man That Will was written, the first English treatise on sword combat, followed a few years later by the manuscript now known as Cotton Titus, which covers sword and also stuff. By the second half of the 15th century, fencing masters were keeping schools in London, despite the law still in place banning it. But it was not enough for a full-time income. Two of the most famous, John Cotton and a man known only as Treyer, held positions of wire drawer and fishmonger respectively. When we hit the 16th century, things start to pick up pace, more because of the surviving records than the practice itself. John Leddle wrote a treatise on swordplay that may or may not have actually been his, and in 1540, Henry VIII granted letters of patent to the London Masters of Defence, though this did not grant them the status of a formal company or of a guild. Masters still kept secondary professions. George Naylor was a groom, Richard Best was a gunner, and William Hearn was both a yeoman of the guard and also a member of the Cloth Workers' Company. In 1541, longbow practice was made a legal requirement. After the death of Henry VIII, the company repeatedly tried to confirm its legal status and failed to do so. At the very end of the 16th century, Saviolo and Silva both published their works, but Saviolo's may actually have been written by the Englishman John Florio. Numerous Italian fencing masters plied their trade in London, much to Silva's disappointment. In 1603, Henri IV of France sent his namesake, Henry Prince of Wales, a selection of fine French weapons, along with an equally fine French fencing master to teach their use. Eight years later, he was still in the employ of the English court. In 1605, James I finally signed a warrant appointing William Joyner and ten other fencing masters as a commission, having the same monopoly as their predecessors. They were still not a guild, but their constitution, Sloan Manuscript 2530, was typical of that of a guild of the time. The masters of defence had ranks, held gradings, issued challenges, and charged for their tuition. They fought with a variety of weapons, including, but not limited to, two-handed sword, bastard sword, long sword, back sword, sword and buckler, and sword and dagger, as well as the pike, halberd, and quarterstaff. In 1614, George Hale published his work, The Private School of Defence, and in 1617, the famous misogynist Joseph Swetnam published his treatise on swordplay entitled The School of the Noble and Worthy Science of Defence. In 1623, the Monopolies Act was passed, which effectively ended the Company of Masters, who had never managed to gain guild status. In 1626, a play called Three to One, being an English-Spanish combat, was published, telling the supposedly true story of Richard Peake, an English soldier who was captured by the Spanish and eventually released due to his supreme skill with a quarterstaff. Around the same time, George Silver finished but never published his second work. In 1639, a book by the title of Pallas Armata, The Gentleman's Armoury, was published. The author was identified only by the initials G.A. It's thought to be Gideon Ashwell, an academic from King's College, Cambridge, but this isn't certain. By this time, the formal prize playing of the Company of Masters, which had been used to award rank, had started to become a public spectacle, where prize fighters displayed their abilities on stage, and the audience threw money onto the stage for their favourites. In 1642, civil war broke out. So, what do you think? Was there anything there that you want to hear more about? Was there anything obvious that I missed? Shall I keep going? Shall we do 1642 onwards? Stick something in your comments. Let me know. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. That would be great. Um, 
And yeah, to those of you still here at the very end of yet another quite short video, Fight Team.